Today, we are talking about the FAA denial on completion of Starship orbital launch due to environmental reviews. But before that, we welcome you all to our channel Liftoff. We post daily updates from the world of space. If you enjoy our content, make sure to subscribe to our channel to never miss out on any updates. The environmental review is a key requirement for obtaining an FAA launch license. However, the FAA is delaying the final report's release until February 28, 2022. This is due to the number of comments on the specific programmatic environmental assessment. According to the FAA, the administration reviewed more than 18,000 public comments on the draft version of the report released in September. SpaceX is working to respond to those public comments under FAA supervision. However, neither SpaceX nor the FAA provided additional details about the analysis of the comments. Confirmed in a tweet that the delay would push Starship's first orbital flight to at least March 22nd. Delays like this are not unheard of for the FAA. In fact, an environmental review of the proposed launch site in Camden, Georgia, suffered several delays before the site was awarded its spaceport license. SpaceX did not provide additional information on the process or when the company would complete an orbital launch from the Boca Chica site once approved. SpaceX continues work down in South Texas while this is all ongoing. They recently conducted a couple of cryogenic tests of Super Heavy Booster 4 and Starship 20 could conduct a static fire as soon as today. In between these tests, work continues to prepare the launch site for orbital operations. In addition, there were reports of issues with the tank farm at the orbital launch site and it is understood that SpaceX is working on corrections to these issues. While this delay is disappointing, SpaceX is not prepared for its orbital launch attempt. The launch mount is still receiving attention while work continues on the launch tower and catch arms. Booster 4 still needs to have its own static fire tests too. However, the final PEA is only part of the story. SpaceX will still need a launch license or an experimental launch permit to conduct the orbital launch. The environmental review is just one part of the FAA's commercial space licensing process. SpaceX's license application must also meet FAA safety, risk and financial responsibility requirements. While the final PEA may be completed at the end of February, the launch license review process could take another month. So realistically, we're looking at April 2022 for SpaceX to get the go-ahead for an orbital launch. Technical details of S-20 In its true last act of the year, SpaceX successfully fired up its first orbital class Starship for the fourth time in approximately two months, placing the prototype one step closer to flight readiness. Starship S-20 first left its roost in SpaceX's Starbase factory in early August, briefly performing a fit test atop Super Heavy Booster 4, both only partially complete at this time. Both returned to their nests for finishing touches soon thereafter. However, relative to almost all other prototypes SpaceX has built in South Texas in the last two years, Starship S-20's path to flight readiness has been a long and windy one. It took SpaceX a full eight weeks after that first rollout to prepare Ship 20 for and complete its first cryogenic proof test in which the rocket was pressurized and filled with hundreds of tons of liquid nitrogen, LN2. It took another three weeks after that milestone for SpaceX to then prepare Ship 20 for an even more important test, its first Raptor engine static fire. The process began on October the 19th with Ship 20's first Raptor pre-burner test in which smaller secondary combustion chambers designed to supply the engine's main combustion chamber with a combustible mixture were briefly ignited on their own. On October the 21st, the next milestone finally came, with Starship S-20 not only completing the first on-pad static fire of a Raptor vacuum engine, but also performing a second test during the same window, firing up the same RVAC and a gimballing Raptor Center engine less than an hour later. It was an impressive leap in apparent confidence, with Ship 20 jumping from the slowest prototype to reach a testing milestone to the first prototype of any kind to complete back-to-back -back static fires less than an hour apart. 
After another unusually long three weeks of work, some of which was spent installing four more Raptors on Starship S-20, the ship completed a second pre-burner test, the first of any kind to simultaneously feature or involve six Raptor engines. Unlike the first campaign, which had a two-day gap, SpaceX then turned SN-20 around in the same window and performed the first six Raptor static fires 50 minutes later. Both a success, according to CEO Elon Musk. Another Ship 20 static fire was subsequently attempted another three or so weeks later, ultimately resulting in an abort on December the 1st. Only four weeks later did SpaceX try again, successfully completing what appeared to be Starship S-20's second six-engine static fire without issue on December the 29th. The company attempted a second static fire a few hours later, but that try was less lucky, culminating in an abort seconds before ignition and wrapping up the day's testing. Pre-burner tests have become increasingly rare as SpaceX's sea-level Raptor design matured over the course of tens of thousands of seconds of ground testing, and later thousands of seconds of ground and flight testing on Starship prototypes. Starship S-20 had two engines during its first test. One Raptor was the sea-level optimized variant SpaceX has built dozens of and fired for 30,000 plus seconds on the ground. The other, however, was a vacuum-optimized Raptor with a much larger nozzle, the first of its kind to participate in any kind of testing while installed on a Starship prototype. It's possible that Raptor vacuum engines have even more design tweaks outside of their larger expansion nozzles. Regardless, SpaceX has only built and tested around 10 RVAC prototypes over the last year, making it a less mature engine than its sea level cousins. That could explain why SpaceX appeared to have chosen to perform a pre-burner test first, instead of jumping straight into a wet dress rehearsal and static fire. That also means that October 18th's test was likely the first time a Raptor vacuum engine was partially ignited while installed on a Starship. Elon Musk set to provide a new update presentation in the near term. Numerous unanswered questions may finally gain some clarity. Such an overview is likely to focus on the central area of concern for Musk, which is the production pace of the Raptor 2 engine. With the FAA citing its plans to issue the final programmatic environmental assessment for the SpaceX Starship slash Super Heavy project no earlier than the end of February, SpaceX can claim the review process is the schedule driver. However, Booster 4 has yet to conduct a static fire test, likely including an eventual full 29 engine firing. With this, we wrap up today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope to see you again with more updates. Until next time.